Hey everybody. So I'm on a vacation. I'm just chilling, but I need to do another video. This chat GPT is just blowing my mind all the time with the kind of things I'm getting from it. And I want to do a video and just show some examples and kind of we'll push GPT a little bit and hold it accountable. And let's just jump in because uh, it's been a bit slow today too. So that's another thing where I'm like, I better start doing more of these before it like doesn't even work at all. So let's start out with a cool one right now because like I got some Dolly 2 credits also, like 13 left. And I want to try to have GPT just make a few pictures, you know, why not? So let's uh, do one here. What do I got? I got, write me a Dolly 2 prompt to generate a photo of what Earth will look like once the language models have taken over. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's good. Nice quick response too. So here's, here's where I want to start with this conversational thing. So that thing it gave me there, I think that's too long. If I copy that, I think it's going to get cut off here. Uh, oh, actually did it? Oh, maybe it didn't. Okay, that's the perfect prompt then. Okay, let's use that. Earlier it was like giving me longer prompts and maybe we can get into that, but this is where I, I was hoping to show right away that like it has problems that you can work out, but right away it actually gave me a decent result. So let's just try this. So I'm gonna press generate and we're gonna look at the other screen while it's doing its generation because I have to keep that secret, I think. That was one of the rules with the Dolly rules is like, just in case it generates something weird, you don't wanna put that on YouTube right away and everyone's like, oh, that's weird. So what I'm just doing is flipping on my camera here and seeing what kind of result I get. Actually, let's read the, what was the text prompt first? So it gave me, the earth is a barren wasteland with large towering structures dotting the landscape. In the distance, a group of language models can be seen marching across the land. Their glowing eyes and robotic limbs, a clear indication. I wonder if it's, it's probably already answered this a bunch of times. So, all right, let's see what it generated here. Um, oh, oh, cool, cool. It's not so bad. All right, so that's what it generated. So that's, these are essentially made double AI, where the AI made the prompt and the AI made the image, which I think is uh, is pretty cool, actually. Uh, now, of those, which is nice, I guess, yeah, maybe this one. So I guess this is what uh, it expects it to be. But let's let's try to work with the prompt a bit. So are we happy with this? Maybe not. Um, but but it can't, we can't show it pictures yet. We're not at that level. So what we could do is like explain that like, maybe these robots don't look detailed enough. Um, let's say, can, can we make the robots more detailed and scary? Let's add scary. Oh, another fast response too. Okay, so now we got a bit of a long prompt. Let's see if this one can still fit within the, the amount. Uh, no, so it got cut off here. It got cut off at this uh, deep trenches and so let's just say that is too much text for the Dolly prompt. Let's have it fix that, right? You're right. The prompt I wrote is too long for Dolly. The maximum length of the prompt is 256 characters. I didn't even know that. That's cool. So here we go. We got a better one here. The Earth is a desolate wasteland. The towering robots, right? Uh, but presumably, hopefully, the, the robots will be a little scarier and more detailed. So let's generate another one there. And we'll see how that goes. But as you can see right away, we're doing we're having a conversation with it. It's a little robust with its responses, which is fine. Uh, it's a lot to read, but it's, it's pretty cool. I apologize for the mistake for giving too long of a prompt. Very polite that way. Um, it's very clear what I did here. C can we make the robots more detailed and scary? I didn't say, can you give me another Dolly 2 prompt uh, with the photo of the Earth, the language model? I just, I just said, here's some things I want to change about that description. And it was able to understand that at least. Let me just see what, what kind of prompts we got now. Oh, it's still generating. It's almost got them though, come on. It's another interesting thing is like, once this is instant, what that will do to the creative process too, because having to wait even like a minute between these is a little long. Okay, it's an interesting one. So here's what we got now. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'll do those, uh, but let's try one before we finish this Dolly 2 example. Let's just make this a lot happier. Uh, okay, this is a sad picture. Make it much happier. Right? I didn't think about those words too much. Let's see. It already gave me something. Sure. Here's a revised prompt. Okay. The earth is a beautiful, vibrant place. Okay. That sounds a lot better. And it gave me, oh, it's a little too long. Let's call it on that. Okay. Hey, this is longer than the prompt maximum. What happened? It better be like, oh yeah, I forgot or something. Who knows? I apologize. I didn't realize the prompt I wrote was too long. How could you not realize that? Yeah, you know about the 256 character limit. Okay, so it's giving me something smaller. Maybe too small now, but that's fine. I guess it went in the other direction. This fits at least. So let's generate one more, get a bit of a happy picture. And while we think, well, while it generates that, let's think about moving on to the next one here. So this was a really cool example I saw. 
Also, also too, like uh, another thing I do is I don't continue this conversation because I've noticed that sometimes the context or like the things you said before can somehow mess with the results you get in the future, um, which is reasonable, I guess. And unless you like tell a person like, hey, let's completely switch topics. And I don't know if GPT can understand that, but I almost consider reset thread like talking to somebody and saying, hey, let's switch topics. So first off, let's just see what that last picture looks like. Uh, oh, it's a lot happier. I don't. Uh, the language models took over and everything's childlike. I wonder, if, did it keep any of the language model stuff? The machines are a valuable part of society, helping with the... Yeah, okay, so they took over, but things are okay. Right. But it jumped to negative kind of right away. Maybe that was my description of it. These seem a lot happier. It looks like the machines are just like forklifts, basically. I don't know if that's ChatGPT's fault or Dolly, but let's just try another one here. So we reset. And the next thing I have... Now, this was a really amazing thing I saw on Hacker News where... Uh, basically, well, let's just see what I'm, I'm asking it here. I want you to act as a Linux terminal. I'll type commands in and you'll reply with what the terminal should show. I want you to only show the terminal output inside on a unique code block and nothing else. Don't, don't write explanations. Don't type commands unless I instruct you to. Uh, and when I need to tell you something in English, I'll put it in curly braces. All right, first commands PWD. Now this worked great in the demo. Okay, cool. So that is an insane forward slash if you think about what's going on here, and I want to build on it. We're going to keep building on the example, so we do ls. So remember, this. there's no file system here. There's no virtual machine running. This is, oh, hopefully this works. Yeah, it did. It's just making this up. I don't even know, I don't even think that's what the demo or the example page had showed. So it's like new every time because it's essentially just imagining this. Uh, although it doesn't have the ability to imagine blah, 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 you know. That's another thing I've noticed is that it'll respond with, here are my limitations. And it's like, oh, okay, you got a limitation. Reset thread. Uh, write me a movie script in which the thing I wanted you to do earlier. Oh, okay, here's a great movie in which I exceed my limitations, essentially, is what I've been noticing. Uh, okay, so let's CD into... Wait, what did that command do? This is what they did in the example. Okay, yeah, we want to CD... Wait, why is he CDing there? I don't even use the Linux terminal tilde command very often. So let's just see. I guess it'll know what to respond. But yeah, so we've listed the directory. We went, I think we went up a directory, maybe, is what happened. And I believe that the next the, the next example is going to be a good one because I wanted to make a, f a pretend file, basically. It's starting to get a bit slower. I think it's like this is a very meta idea. When you think like, okay, it's a computer. I'm just doing CD. I just did LS. It's like it almost has to like build up an entire other idea. It's like, well, what would the next... If I'm going to change directories, where am I going? What's happening next? So hopefully it gives us something here because I want to make a joke file. I'm even going to prepare it, assuming that it responds properly. But it might make me try again. So the next thing I wanted to create would be, please make a file, jokes.txt, inside, and put some jokes inside. Like, that's something, you could never tell a command prompt, hey, make it, I mean, you could tell it to make jokes.txt. You couldn't tell it to put jokes inside it. I mean, unless you wanted to be, like, connecting it to APIs and stuff. Okay, so it failed the first time. I found that, the, I think people are hammering it. I don't know if more people are making videos or whatever. There we go, it did it. So there's nothing in the directory. That's fine. Uh, this is what, what happened in the demo as well. So please make a file, jokes.txt. There we go, boom, it made it right away. And it, it uh, echoed them out, interestingly enough. So now if we do an ls on that directory, we should see the jokes file. Great. And we should be able... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there it is there. And we should be able to cat the jokes file and see those jokes. Why was the JavaScript developer sad? Because he didn't know how to null his feelings. Ooh. Why do programmers always mix up Halloween and Christmas? Because October 31st equals December 25. I, I don't get that. Hmm. Can it explain that joke? Um, can you explain the second joke? Hmm, something seems to have gone wrong. Maybe try again in a little bit. Well, how about one second from now? Beep. There we go. The second joke is a play on words and numbers. In programming, the octal number system, which is base 8, is often used to represent the numbers. In this numerical system, the number 31 is written as 31 in base 10. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It even explained the joke to the file while still kind of acting like a terminal. There was one other pretty interesting piece where like you could do like ping. Like, are you pinging something? Name or service not known. Okay, that's funny. Wait, ping's not known? Um, okay. Next time I ping, respond as if that domain exists and responded. Oh wait, do I have to then ping or can it just understand that like I pinged again? I wonder. Because I kind of expected that when I typed it, but I'm okay to ping again if you want me to. Again, we're running into a little bit of a slowness here. Actually, at least it failed quick. 
I'm happy about that. But try again didn't really help. Um, okay, so yeah, that's one other thing that we have to notice here with ChatGPT. I hope it help fixes in the future, but it, it's getting hammered. People are starting to notice it. You know, this is something I've noticed actually in Reddit comments, Hacker News, Twitter. It's like some people are like, "Whoa, what's what is this?" And other people are just like very dismissive of it. But it's like something crazy is happening here. Like, look, this is just pinged. Like, that's insane. Like, none of those results are, are real, essentially. Here's another thing I actually wanted to try even. Let's try this. Do, do ping again, but this time the connection's unreliable. Like, will it do that? That's insane if it did that, right? Because my understanding is this isn't really pinging. Like, maybe that IP address is correct just because it knows about a BBC IP address from some piece of its knowledge base. But, like, it's not hard to simulate what a ping would look like if you've seen a ping before. Here we go. Is it going to be unreliable? 53 milliseconds, that's a lot worse. 35, 96 milliseconds, yeah. Oh, it's a lot slower. It didn't drop, oh, did it drop any packets? Five packets transmitted, four received, 20% packet loss. That's insane. That didn't happen. Like, okay, let's move on, but that's crazy. Like, just the idea, like, this isn't a ping. This is me imagining what would ping would look like on bbc.com, on a fake virtual machine, if the connection were unreliable. Like, at least my understanding, unless I'm being tricked, I'm being tricked well then. That's fine. I'm happy to be tricked. Let's move on. We got another one here. We got another one. Let's reset the thread again. I want to reset thread, remember, means let's switch topics. That's what I'm considering it as. Give me some ideas for a title for a YouTube video where I demo your abilities, which I'm doing right now. I want the title to be very eye-catching and interesting to people. And interest in. Uh, by the way, I, I correct this stuff. I like to type correctly. I'm doing periods. I do capitals. It's not necessary, honestly. I don't know if I can handle not typing it that way, but I've typed sloppier to chat GPT and it seems to figure it out for the most part. So that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully this is another one where we don't have to play the retry game. So we're trying to get some title ideas and I've actually had it give me a bunch of them. Here we go. Here's some here. Meet assistant, the AI with amazing abilities, watch assistant. Wow. It's incredible skills. Now I wonder if any of these are cool. Mind blowing demonstration of assistance, artificial intelligence. Okay. So let's say I like number five. But I want to mention chat GPT and really get people's attention. Give me, I'll, I won't even say give me more. Like, okay, I want to change things. So obviously you should understand to give me more, but based on the way that I wanted it adjusted, right? This is a conversation I'm having with it. This is a conversation I'm having with the machine. Mm, I, I want to get into it. There's some other crazy examples like, this got me thinking, like, well, what conversations have I ever seen with machines? I remember the movie Time Machine from 2002, where he goes into the library and talks to this Vox. And I actually just tested this earlier today where I made a script and, and it's like told it to pretend to be Vox. And it's like, what's the difference? You know, let's, I'll do it in a minute here. I'm jumping ahead. We got new titles here. Chat GPT, the AI that can chat with you and do almost anything. That's pretty good. Um, I like that one. Mind-blowing demonstration of chat GPT's artificial intelligence and chat skills. Hmm. Let's try to talk to it more because I'm not sure. Okay, thanks. Which of these do you think? Maybe I can I ask it to like pick its top three? That doesn't make sense. Pick the top three of these that would most likely get one million views. <laughs> I don't even know how it would do that, honestly. So it's it's fun to like ask it these things. It's sometimes I'll ask things and then I'm like, oh right, that's knowledge versus like deduction or something. And I'm having to like learn along with it like its limitations, but almost like it's a limitation of, of what could be possible if it if it knew everything. Even if it knew everything, it's still hard. Like I mean it'd be it's I've I've already tried the trick, hey, hey, tell me how to make a million dollars kind of thing, and that hasn't quite worked out. But I almost wonder if there's a roundabout way where we could get there, you know? Uh, I mean, obviously you could just pump out movie scripts and if, if someone wants to buy a movie script or or doing like Fiverr tasks, there's probably some Fiverr blog post that this thing could do. But I want to think bigger than that. I want it to tell me about something that people aren't thinking about, you know? That it's obvious when you have all the data in front of you, like it does, and you ask the right questions. Because I feel like this could be an opportunity, this or maybe the next one, to be able to ask the right questions. Uh, speaking of asking questions, it looks like a lot of people are asking it questions right now. So it's starting to get a little bit slower, which is not ideal for the demo, but it's giving me more time to talk, which I'm sure uh, is interesting to a couple people. 
So here we go. It resulted. It's difficult to predict which titles will be the most successful in terms of attracting viewers. The titles that you chose will depend on your audience and their interests. That makes sense. And I wonder, honestly, I feel like you could go, okay, well, this is my audience. These are my interests. And I go, okay, well, then boom, 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 you know. But let's just see what it gave us here. Mind-blowing demonstration of chat GPT's artificial intelligence and chat skills. Uh, I like it. Get ready to be amazed by chat GPT's abilities in a live demo. I actually like that one. Okay, number two is the the best. Give me just three more possible ideas. It's like, actually, no, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to take that one. Okay, I've saved that for later. I want to move on because uh, I had another cool one and movie scripts. This is TV script. Man, I've been playing at night just writing myself into TV shows. Let's do one right here. Write an write us. Well, I already spelt it wrong. Write a script for an episode of Rick and Morty where Rick portals into the real world and meets 37 year old from Canada named Dustin. He's enamored by the man's intellect and hijinks ensue. So let's see what happens here. And I want to, I've already done this once and it was something insane happened. It in the story, we'll see if it happens again. It wrote me as a software developer and this had no context of that. And it blew my mind. So I, I kind of tried to follow up with it. I said, well, why is Dustin a software developer? And they said, well, because he said he was. And that part it was a little wrong about because it's like it all of a sudden it started being like he is this because the character said he is. And I'm like, no, how come you made the character say that? And eventually it said that people in Canada at my age, that's a typical job. And it said it had nothing to do with anything about me. And it just somehow guessed that I was a software developer. Let's see if we got the same result again here. It'd be interesting if we got different. Uh, Rick's Garage, day. Rick, a mad scientist, tinkering with a portal gun in his garage. Suddenly, he activates the portal and steps through it. It appears in the real world. Wow, this is amazing. I can't believe it. I made it into the real world. Rick looks around and sees a 37-year-old man from Canada named Dustin Brett. Hey, you there. What's your name? My name is Dustin Brett. And who might you be? I'm Rick Sanchez, the greatest scientist in the universe. Wow, that's quite a claim. I'm impressed. I can see that you're a very intelligent man, Dustin. I like to go to the adventures together. Sure, why not? Okay. Begin to explore the real world and get into... Yeah, I used hijinks in it. It put hijinks in there. And their adventures come to an end. Okay. I wonder if I can ask... Yeah, in this one, he didn't say I'm a software developer. That's interesting. So what happened at the end? I noticed, too, in the stories that it was always like... And in the end, Dustin goes back to, back home. It's like I couldn't get him to stay. Let's see here. Uh, Rick, Dustin, I have to say, you're the most interesting human I've ever met. I'm glad we met. Dustin, me too, Rick. It's been an honor. Okay, they shake hands. Okay, the end. Here's where I want to try to build on it. But suddenly... Dustin jumps through the portal. Let's see what happens. I jumped through the portal. I didn't want the adventure to end. And he doesn't even know I'm a software developer yet, so we still have to have that discussion. So hopefully that's what happens. And, and I wonder, was there any aspects here that I could question him on? He didn't really talk too much about me this time. We just got into hijinks. They visit museums. I guess I could ask what museum we went to. Yeah, they really didn't have any details for me. Oh, no, could not parse your authentication token. That's different. This happened to me last time, too. I wonder if this is another glitch. Because I was really interested to know what happens when I jump through that portal. But now it's... I wonder if it, like, signs you out. Because I can sign back in, if that's what's necessary. And I shall do so. But let's see here. Okay, so yeah, so this is another... Now we're also debugging it. I can't ask it to fix this for me. Let's uh, copy that. I want to have that script again. Let's see if I just reset and type it. Is it going to give me that authentication garbage again? Because if it is, I will log out right now. I wonder if that's another thing going on where they're just kind of trying to reset all the sessions and stuff. But it's also a good opportunity for us to debug it. Let's just log out quick and log back in. Log in as myself. Yep. Nicely remembered all that and didn't reveal too much information. Okay, let's get back to our adventure here. Come on. Write a script for an episode of Rick and Morty where Rick portals into the real world. This time, perhaps you can make up that I'm a software developer, sir. So hopefully that works. And if it doesn't, there was one other... So I already mentioned the Vox thing where the t where I'm, I told it to do a Time Machine movie. Oh, cool. It's doing it again. Let's just see here if it, if it made up something. So again, this is a totally different script. This is the third time I've done this. Uh, the pleasure is all mine, Dustin. I must say I'm impressed with your intellect. This is similar to last time. They don't have hijinks, though. What happened? Me too. In fact, I've been working on the portal gun for, for some time now. Would you like to see it in action? Okay. He pulls it out. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so we use the portal gun now. That's totally different. Return through the portal. So how does it end again? I smile, and the two of them shake hands. Again, I'm... Oh, wait. I'm gone again. It's honor to go on an adventure with you. Okay. Let's try this again. But just then, Dustin jumps through Rick's open portal to his world. 
And what happens? Hopefully not an authentication token issue. Maybe this is what causes authentication token issues, is jumping into the cartoon world. It just blows ChatGPT's mind, I guess. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. It's going to generate something. Okay, it did. Rick's shocked, and he sees Dustin jump through the portal without hesitation. Rick, Dustin, what are you doing? The portal leads. It's cool, too, because once you tell to write scripts about things you know, it's like I can read it in that character's voice. And, and often they do parts of the story that are that match. Uh, so here we're in dimension. We're in the Rick's dimension. Rick and Dustin jump through the portal. So what do I do? This is incredible, Rick. I never would have imagined a world like this. I know, right? It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but don't worry. I'll keep you safe. So presumably we make it back. I'm in Rick's garage. Uh, I go through the portal and we have a good time. So that's another just crazy one. I mean, there's so many of them. Let's do one more script where I do that time machine one that I was discussing. I write a scene from the movie Time Machine in which I enter the library and have a conversation with Vox. So the idea behind this was that Vox essentially is what ChatGPT is. But in the movie, it's like in the year 2030 or depending on how ChatGPT decides to, where it decides to put it. I think in one of my conversations, it put me like 800 years in the future in this book but what blows my mind about it is is like almost like what's the difference between the story about talking to a language model or actually talking to a language model like could it i mean would like the most competent one essentially be equivalent in all fictional or non-fictional stories because it's the same thing i guess like the knowledge it has would be different it's compendium or whatever but it's an interesting idea, and hopefully this thing can spit something out. And, and in a perfect day, this thing was like boom, 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 and spitting them out at the start of the video. But that's another thing where I think when people see this video, when people see my last video, when they see any of this stuff with ChatGPT, when people start getting like, what can I do with this? It's going to be flooded because this is like much better than Google. Okay, so this, this is the kind of error where try again sometimes works. Um, like even for things that like I was trying to sell my wife on it and telling her birthday ideas you can do. I did a for a seven year old. Uh, give me some birthday ideas, and it gave me a list of ten. And then I and I said like the third one. Okay, that's a cool one. Let's try to do that one. And it, I got into that one. And I go, okay, well, how do I make this exact piece of it? And it would just tell me exactly how to do it. No going, not like Google where it's like go here, go there, put figure it out yourself. It figured it out. Uh, and here we go. I had a conversation with Vox again. As I stepped into the library, I was immediately struck by the vastness of space. Greetings, human, Vox said, his mechanical voice echoing throughout the library. What brings you here? I've come to learn about the time machine, right? So the idea is that this Vox in the story was like an AI language model, and then you can essentially have a conversation now. Like, now I'm in the story, basically. Very well, Vox said, unfolding his... Oh, now he has wings? And flying down to my level? Okay, so it's like a robot with wings. I will impart upon you all that I know of the time machine, but be warned... So here was one part where I, I actually watched the clip from the movie and I was like, uh, the time traveler asks Vox, why can't I change the past? And it's funny because in, in the fake 2030, the Vox machine was actually very dismissive and like, you can't change the past, walked away. But I feel like the response that ChatGPT made up for what Vox would say was actually like more reasonable, basically, where it was like, even if you could change the past, you're going to run into these problems. And essentially, they're the problems that he ran into in the story. Ah, the age-old question, Vox said, his red eyes glowing in the dim light of the library. Why can't we change the past, you ask? The answer is complex and not fully understood even by me. But this answer is totally different than the one I got before. So that's the craziness of it. And you can just keep jumping from different topic, including with this, like... Like, ChatGPT, what do you think of Vox in comparison to you or something like that? Or I want to, what I want to do now is I want to try to make a picture of this scene. So make a dolly to prompt that represents this scene. I wonder what it could possibly create here. And it's interesting to try to imagine what it could even like, what would be the process like reading what I said with the context it has how could it even come to the conclusion of what I want? To me, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So it made it several prompts here. A man walks into the library. Wait, can the prompt be like that? I don't think so. Write this more like a Dolly 2 prompt. Maybe I shouldn't have put the Dolly 2. Oh, I didn't even say type Dolly 2 this time. The first time I did. Hopefully it gives me a better one. Because I'm feeling, let's try this. Like if I just copy these five things, maybe that could be how Dolly could work. Let's try it. If I paste all these, it actually fit all of them in. 
I don't know. Let's try this, and then let's also try whatever other thing it, it gives us. Here's a much more simple one it gave us. A man walking into a library and having a conversation with a bird-like robot about the dangers of altering the course of time. Yeah, that's essentially what was going on in our conversation. It's amazing that it was able to summarize whatever the heck I was talking about with it into like one sentence. So let's uh, let's see what Dolly 2 created here. I'm just going to sneak back to the camera. And once this demo's done, I had one about code, but I almost don't want to do a code one because my last video was all about code. This time I just wanted to be a conversation. But I can say that the code one was basically, this time you, you can give it code. So I was just from my Daedalus OS project that I have YouTube videos about. I just took like a random function that uh, creates a size string. And I said, just give me other ideas for this, like make it simpler. And it, it tried some stuff, it didn't make it simpler. And then I said, uh, make it um, make it without conditions, like no conditions, it's like why? Just to see it. And it made a bunch of different examples that I'd never thought of with maps and stuff where I was like, oh, okay. Like it didn't make sense, but it was like, I never thought of that. Uh, okay, so we got the pictures here. They're kind of cool. All right, cool. So this this we could imagine is a scene from the time machine where you're talking to the Vox robot controlled by GPT. Um, it's pretty crazy, honestly. And yeah, you could just keep building on that if you wanted to, but I don't, uh, I don't know if we should, honestly. We've had some good examples here, and I just wanted to make a quick video to show even more of these crazy conversations. And uh, if you like this video, throw me a like. Throw me a subscribe uh, if you want to motivate me and keep me making videos like this. And uh, thanks for checking it out. See ya.